your Bible, Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to read verses 7 through 17. I want to encourage the church of starting a new podcast um, of old, uh, just preachers. A lot of, uh, every Wednesday, they're kind of, you, you can go to, if you look at my Facebook or you'll, you, even my website, the Old Past Journal, you'll be able to find this spot. Every Wednesday, I put up an old time preacher. Last week, we put up Harold Seitler. And uh, Miss Pankin, she goes, it's, it's, it's a little scratchy. I said, no, that's his voice. And um, said, that, that's how Harold Seitler preached. And you'd have to know um, that voice. And I want you to, I want our church to be familiar with some of these. I'll still listen to preachers from the present, but I want to put more of those who've already passed and gone to heaven. I think it's important that we know how they preach. You don't think I'm tough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll let you hear them. And then you're going to say, wow, Brother Dominic, he needs to get a little bit tougher. <laughs> and um, but I want you and, and to go there. You can go to Apple Podcast, look up sermons from the old past, and you can subscribe to it right there and listen to it every Wednesday. And I would encourage you to do that. These are men. These are old past independent Baptist preachers. Yeah. That's who they are. And I want to encourage you to be able to get that, get listen to that sometime, maybe driving down the road, running people off as a UPS driver, whatever you're doing. And uh, but you make sure that your heart that you get in that and listen to those. Revelation chapter 12. Once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the word of God. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Revelation 12 and verse 7. If you have it, give me a good, strong amen. Scripture yeah. says in verse 7, and there was a war in heaven. Hmm. I guess war is not completely bad. This is a good one. There is war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, the Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him while up for that day. Yeah. I heard a loud voice. Do you think I'm loud? So God says, it's going to be loud in heaven. It's going to be like loud, and you're not going to like heaven. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, where the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. When the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away with the flood. The earth helped the woman. The earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the blood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I want to just kind of discuss with you a little bit tonight on this topic, overcoming Satan's attacks. Overcoming Satan's attacks. Father, take these next few minutes. I look at this great crowd tonight. Not a bad crowd for Sunday night. First Sunday night of December. With all the sickness going on, still to see this auditorium full. And I, I, I'm glad about that. But Lord, as we open your book, I pray we look in your word to learn how to overcome Satan's attacks. May we listen. Because one day those attacks will come our way if we show you. Now help us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. 
Verse 10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. If you serve the Lord for any length of time, you're going to have to fight Satan. Right. You're just going to have to fight. Uh, Satan does not like what we do for God. There's no getting around it. You look at the scriptures. In the scriptures, there's many that fought Satan head on. I think of Daniel. The Bible says that he that he, he fought Satan. He, he prayed for 21 days. 21 days he prayed for God to answer prayer. But Satan's angel withstood God's angel. It was a spiritual warfare that Daniel fought. Get this now through prayer. Yeah. I think of Job. Job, head on, face Daniel, or face Satan's touch. And Satan, I don't know if anybody's had the touch like Job did, where Satan personally went after him and touched every part of his life, and yet Job still came out on top side despite uh, Satan coming against him. I think of Peter. Jesus said to Peter, he says, Peter, Satan hath desired to have you that he may what? Sift you as wheat. I was talking to Brother Tremble. And I said, you know what that word sift means? He goes, I don't, I don't know. I said, have you ever cooked? He goes, I don't know. No. And uh, I, just, I, I said, I said there's, there's something you sift. How many of you know what a sifter is? You know what a sifter is? You put, you put that flour in that sifter. What's it do? It takes all the chunks out and it, and it just, it makes it into powder. God says that God, he says that God, if it's, he says that Satan didn't want to just destroy Peter. Yeah. He, wanted to, he wanted to completely take Peter apart where he's nothing but a bunch of powder that had been sifted by the attacks of Satan. And he was saying, and he says, hey, he says, now, now Peter, he says, Satan's after you. Why? Because Peter was the leader of that early church. And Satan was after him and trying to stop him because he understood what that early church, what would happen with that early church. And may I say, the same Satan that was after Peter and the same Satan that was after Job and the same Satan that was after Daniel, can I say, he's after you and I tonight if we're doing anything for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, why should we think that we won't fight Satan if, if, if we're doing something for God? It's going to happen. Now, I'm not saying that everybody here is perfect. Certainly not. And neither was Job. And neither was Peter. And neither was Daniel. But can I say, when you're doing something for God, Satan puts a target on your back and he says, I'm going to go after that one. I'm going to stop them any way I can. Now, follow when I read in my way, that's why God says take on the whole armor of God. Yeah. Because you cannot get this now, you cannot defeat. You know, we, we like that when you're a young preacher boy, and uh, when you're a young preacher boy, you want to act like you can attack hell with a squirt gun. Yeah, you go after the hell with a squirt gun, and hell will show you really what you're not. Can I tell you? You better do it God's way. You better do it. That's why I take on the whole armor of God. You cannot fight Satan in your own way. You've got to do it God's way. Now, when I read the book of Revelation, I find that there's three attacks that Satan, three ways that Satan comes after those who are serving God. First way is accusation. Go to Revelation 12, 10, if you would. Revelation 12, 10. Notice what he says in verse 10. He says, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For notice, be what? Accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So what does that mean? That means when you get to serve God, allegations are going to come at Satan. He's going to accuse you of things that whether true or not true is not the point. He's going to accuse us. Now, I'm saying to Mary the Baptist Church, we have to understand if we're, we're a church, we're a very um, uh, if I, if I should say a pastor church is the right word about going after the souls of mankind. Now, 
Now, because of that, Satan's going to do whatever he can. He's going to throw accusations at us. Whether true or not true, it's not the point. That's just how Satan comes after us. And we have to beware that if I'm going to win this battle against Satan, accusations are going to come. You know, I've been at this scene for over three decades, full-time ministry. I've had a few accusations thrown at me. I don't understand because the know me is the love. Yeah. I should have gotten a whole lot more amen from that one than just my son in law. He just tried to dig himself out of a hole. He got himself in a few minutes ago. <laughs> you know, and, and, and sometimes, my wife, sometimes when she, she, she sees them more than I do, I, I tend not to, um, I don't want to read about what anybody's saying about me because I want to think everybody likes me. And um, it was I was so sad. She goes, they, they just don't know you. They don't know you. And that's quite true. But can I tell you, accusations are going to come. Right. People are going to say ugly things. Yeah. And sometimes even when you're, okay, I talk, I, I, let me talk to some of you. Some of you, uh, um, some of you married couples, but you're, the, you're serving God. Your spouse is not. You're here tonight. They never come to church. And your spouse is going to say ugly things about you. And can I tell you, that's just part of what Satan does. Satan goes after us through accusations. Why? Because can I tell you, we all want to be loved. Do we not? We, none of us want people, we don't want people to accuse us of things. We all want to be liked. But, and Satan knows that. Yeah. And so Satan, he comes and he says, let me throw some accusation. He says, maybe that is for the death. And that doesn't slow you down. There's another way he comes after us. Through persecution. Yeah. Go to Revelation 12 and verse 13. Notice what it says in verse 13. When the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman. That woman's talking about Israel. Yeah. Now, he persecuted Israel. Can I tell you, he's going to persecute God's people. Now, what is persecution? Get this now. Mistreatment for standing for truth. Amen. Mistreatment for standing for truth. Amen. Can I tell you, and I know this is going to shock you, it really will shock some of you. There are people in our Christian world that think that standing for truth is not, they, 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 will, they will criticize those who are standing for truth as painful. Can I tell you, just because I stand for truth, it's compromised and it paints a picture on somebody else. That doesn't make me the bad guy. Now, I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of God's people that will mistreat their own people in the staff because someone's standing for truth. Can I tell you, hey, hey, hey they didn't want, okay, um, you, you read that, you read the Pauline epistles. You go through um, 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 Romans and, and you go through um, Galatians and Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and you read the Pauline epistles and you see Paul talk about different people in these epistles. Some that were in the church and they said horrible things about it and they persecuted Paul and they persecuted Silas and they persecuted. I tell you, Satan says, if I can't get them to stop with accusation, persecution. He said, I'll say it. By the way, can I say this to the Christian of America? Hey, persecution is going to come to America. That's why we got to tough them up right now. This, hey, and I know I'm preaching to the choir right now. That's why I try to get people to come Sunday night and Wednesday night. You said, why? Because we've got to get tough enough. Because you know, when that day comes, if we won't go to church on Sunday night, and we won't go to church on Wednesday night, we dead sure are not going to stand when persecution comes. We have got to toughen up as God's people. Why? Because Satan knows he has a short time. And he's going to persecute those, get this now, who are serving the Lord. So there's a third way he comes after us first. He comes after us with talk now with what? Accusation. Say it with me. With what? Accusation. Then he comes after us through what? Persecution. Then there's a third way he just makes war with us. Yeah. Look at look at verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Again, that's Israel. And went to make war with the river. Yeah. What's that? He makes war against our flesh. Right. Yeah. That's why you go back to the book of Ephesians, and God says, put on the whole armor of God. Right. He says, I and by the way. Satan oftentimes doesn't just pick one area. He'll pick different two. Sometimes he'll do all three at the same time. Now, I've got to 
have that whole armor. So when he comes after my flesh, and by the way, every one of us need that armor because we're all humans, we're all sinful humans, and I'm telling you right now, if he can get our flesh to do what our flesh wants to do, get this now, then he has successfully destroyed us. That's why I need to take up the whole armor of God so that when he comes after my flesh and tries to get me to do wrong with my flesh, the armor of God is what protects me. Um, yeah. Now, we look at all this, and he makes a statement. He says the dragon, verse 17, was wrought with the woman and went to make war. Notice this next word with the what? Remnant. Right. Yeah. What's that mean? I mean, there's a small group of people that are serving God. Wow. Yeah. You know what's sad to me? I look at the size of our church. And though we have a good number of people that serve the Lord, there's a handful of people, a remnant of Maranatha about the church that's really involved in serving the Lord. Yeah, right. right. Thank God has been in church work any length of time knows that this is true. It's sad. Because if everybody got involved, do you understand? Okay, I was talking to someone, um, I, I think it was today or yesterday. Do you realize Satan is not an omnipresent being? Yeah. He cannot be everywhere at one time. Only one person is omnipresent, and that is God himself. Right. Now, now, the sad, sad part is Satan doesn't have to worry about a lot of Christians because they're not doing anything to hurt his cause. He is concerned with that remnant that is involved doing something for God, and he does go after the remnant because they're the ones causing damage to his cause. Now, what I'm saying to Mary out of the Baptist Church is the more we get people involved, can I say, the more we water down his attacks against us, though they're always fierce, can I say, we can weather it better if more people got involved in the serving of the Lord and going after Satan. So why? So we can cause damage to his cause. Now, how does this room overcome Satan's attacks? Let me give you several things and we'll pack our bag and go home. And we're not having ice cream tonight because it's too cold outside. <laughs> Can I tell you the first way you overcome him is with the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. So I want you to underline that little phrase, blood of the Lamb. And I want you to put this beside it, reminding Satan you're saved. Yeah. Reminding Satan you're to say. You know, Satan comes after me. You know what I do? All I do. First thing I do. Ha, ah, go ahead, come after me. You can't get it. You know why? Because June 21st, 1973, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. The blood of Jesus Christ was applied to my account. Guess what? You lost. Na 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 boo boo. Yeah, right. Come on now. Yeah. You know why it's important to know that time, that day, that place that you got saved? It's because when that battle comes, hey, they didn't overcome him through their own power. They overcame him through the, through the blood of Jesus Christ. What's that? The day they got saved. Uh, right. Right. Well, I, love, I love talking about the day I got saved. And I can't talk about it enough. And I love it when we can sing about that day, about our salvation. And can I tell you, you ought to always recall every day of your life that Say what? Because that's one way with our Christian testimony, with the blood applied upon our life. Justified as we learned in Sunday school. Justified by faith, by putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save us. We're justified in the Son of God. And it's that blood that allows us to say, I can win this battle Amen. for you. Say it comes. He tries to take his attack. And I said, go ahead, send your attack. But guess what? That's not going to change where I'm going when I die. Come yeah. on now. Yeah. I know I'm going to heaven. You say, why? Because that day I got saved. Yeah. Now, I'm saying right now, you say, preacher, I don't know the day I got saved. Okay, we're worried when you got saved. Yeah. Well, you better know the place. If you don't know the place, then I begin to wonder if you're saved. Because, oh, because everybody will know where they were when they got saved. Yeah. You don't gradually get saved. You accept you are out of place where you got born again, and that place is the day you got saved. Yeah. How do I overcome Satan? Do I overcome him by putting up colored lights and, and getting the praise team up here and, and having everybody wave their hands like this and say, let's get all feel good? Do I do it that way? No, sir. I Go back to the day I got saved. And I say, hey, I got saved, John. And you can't win this battle. How do I overcome Satan? Will I remind them I 
I'm saved. I do it by the blood of Christ. The second way. They overcome Satan, note by what the Bible says, by the word of their testimony. I want you to go back to that little line right there where it says they overcame by the word of their testimony. I want you to underline that little phrase and put this, God's word. God's word. Yeah. What is the word of their testimony? Follow me very carefully. That's God's word. God's word is what gave them a testimony yeah. that they're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Get this now. In other words, I can't get saved without God's word. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I need God's word. So how did how did these saints, how did they overcome Satan's attack? What did they do? Well, they said, hey, we got saved. Remember that day, June 21st, 1973. I knelt down beside my couch in Conway, South Carolina, and I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I'm saved. You've already lost the battle. You may win a few, you may think win, win a few skirmishes with me. You may knock me down. But at the end of the day, I win because I go to heaven. I win because you go to hell. In that word of the testimony, what is that? That's the old King James Bible right here. I look at this and I say, okay, I've got God's word right here. This is the word of my testimony. This book right here, get this down. It is God's word that reminds me I'm not going to say. It's God's word that gives me confidence that I'm saved. It's God's word that gives me courage because I'm saved. Can I tell you somewhere? You got to understand God's word to how you fight the devil. only one offensive weapon in the armor of God. Yeah. The sword of the Spirit. Right. What's that? God's Word. Yeah. This is the only offensive weapon that we have as God's people. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got to use it. Listen to me now. That's why those who don't read their Bible every day, can I tell you, you're struggling in the battle. Why? Because you're not getting familiar with the sword. Yeah. That's good, baby. You know, when I play sports, our coach, with in basketball, he challenged to go to bed with the basketball. We go to bed with the basketball. Of the basketball. So what? Get used to it. Yeah. Get the feel of it. Right. <laughs> Can I tell you what hurts some of you instead of going to bed with your rock and roll music? Yeah. Once you go to bed with the word of God, it's oh, yeah. talking to you. Amen. Amen. Shopping you at night time while you're asleep. Let the word of God be read to you while you're going to sleep. What? How they overcome Satan by the word of their testimony. I can't do it in my own power. And my own power, he will win. But I'm not doing it in my own power. I'm doing it because the blood has been applied to my account. The word of my the word of the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved because of Christ. And that's why I win. And then I go to his word and I say, Thank God, I've got a key change Bible. Get this down. That tells me, hey. Not God's word. Right. I can't use the ESV to overcome Satan. What? Not God's word. Right. I can 
Listen to me. I can't use a, I can't use a, a perverted Bible that doesn't have all of God's word that has changed God's word and changed the gospel to make you say why it's not God's word. Amen. Somewhere, some old past independent Baptist believers need to get back to believing. Hey, I need a sword again. By the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Not yeah. I can't do it. It's not done by my own power. It's done because of Christ. Second, it's done because they did it by the word of their testimony. What's that? The word of God. Yeah. How do they overcome Satan? The Bible says they love not their lives unto the death. Yeah. Circle sure, that phrase, put this beside it. Faith living. Faith living. Yeah. What does that mean? They were all in. All in. Hey. I want you to listen to me. If you're a sports person, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The worst defense that anybody ever uses is prevent defense. That's right. You're ahead. Well, we just want to, we just don't want to get the end zone, but we'll let them get some yardage. Why let them get yardage? Let's just not let them get a first down. Somebody help me out. Right. Right. Tackle the quarterback at the end of the game like I don't care if you are 20 points ahead, don't let him run down the field. All right. All right. All right. I tell you, there's a lot of believers playing prevent defense with the devil. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah. Good. Right. And they're losing ground. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, we just don't want to, we just don't want to be committed all in. Yeah, prevent defense. Right. Mark. And you're losing. Right. Yeah. You're losing. Come on now. Yeah. Hey, if our Savior could be all in for us, why in the world can't we be all in for him? By the way, it's not it's easy. So you're saying that because you're a preacher. I was just way since I was a child. Yeah. I've been all in for a long time. And somewhere, we need some believers that are all in. Yeah. Stop looking for the easy way of life and say, hey, let's get all in. Right. Yeah. Right. Faith. Yeah. You never win against the devil by playing it safe. No. Right. You don't. Yeah. You know why? When you're playing it safe, you don't need God. Right. 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 When you step out by faith, guess who you need? You need God. Yeah. Now, guess what? I, I said at the very beginning, we don't overcome Satan through our own power. We overcome him through Christ living through us. Now, get this now. I get, I get the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved, and I know that. I get the Word of God. Now, what am I going to do? I just decided I'm going to love the, I'm going to love the Lord. I'm not going to love my life up to the death. I'd rather die. Get this now than to be a half-hearted, half-in, half-out. Hey, be all in. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. How do we overcome Satan? Number four, they overcame him by obedience to God. Amen. Obedience to God. Amen. You notice it says, "Which keep the commandments of God, not some, but all." Right. Preacher, how do I how do I defeat Satan? Do right. You choose. Do right. Is doing right always easy? No, but you do right. Hey. You say, preacher, it's kind of tough. Do right. right. Yeah. Do right. The old preacher said, do right till the stars fall, but do right. Amen. Amen. There's times it's not easy to do right. But can I tell you tonight? Well, I've got to do I realize I'm in a battle. I'm in a war against Saint. He's declared war against me because I'm trying to serve the Lord. And so I realize I need, I need I can't do it in my own power. I've got to do it through power. I've got to do it through Christ's power working through me. So I go back to that day that I got saved and I realized by the blood of the Lamb, I overcome Satan. I realized by the word of the testimony, God's word, I overcome Satan. By not loving my life until the death, I overcome Satan. But I overcome Satan by obeying God and just saying, I'm going to obey. Amen. 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 Here's the one that really excited me as I was going through this. It says they overcame Satan by having the testimony of Christ. Right. Now, I stop. You notice that it says it, it says had the testimony of Christ, Jesus Christ. 
Uh, now, what is that testimony? Follow me carefully. Two things. They said about Jesus that he went about doing what? Good. How do you overcome the testimony of Jesus Christ? What's that? Go about every place you go doing good. What good? Okay, here we are. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save. Amen. Amen. What's the good? Going out and leading people to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you? He said, Richard, this is the only thing we talk about is the soul and the soul and the soul and the soul and the Yeah. You know why? Because that's how we need to be saved. Right. That's an offensive weapon. I'm using the sword and I'm fighting Satan and I'm showing people how to get saved and to get saved. Right. Amen. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you something. When I'm under a street battle with Satan, I always grab one. I grab tracks and I go soaring just a little bit more. You say, what? I'm in a battle. Yeah. I'm in a battle. Right. You know, everybody in this room, whatever your sin is, you can overcome that sin. If he said every time that temptation comes, I'm going to go soul winning instead of doing that sin. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. yeah. Right. He said that preacher, I struggle. I don't go soul winning. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you get rid of your bad friends and you start soul winning to them because they don't want to be around you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They'll eat you. That's good. I'm just saying, okay, okay. How am I, I going to overcome Satan? I overcome him by the testimony of Christ. And that testimony was that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. May I say, I know it's the month of December, but let's not let up on our soul winning and let Satan have a victory at Maranatha Baptist Church. Let's keep the soul winning hot. Let's keep going after the souls of mankind. Let's witness to everybody we can. Let's see them get saved. We're fighting Satan. Amen. 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 That's right. We're fighting Satan. Yeah. I'm in a war. Yeah. Better recognize it. Right. And he's after the women who, that crowd, that small crowd of people who are just involved in God. Yeah. So how do we overcome him? Don't ever forget the day you got saved. Yeah. Right. Every day. Man, I got saved June 29th. You don't say this day, this day. I got saved June 21st, 1970. I got saved on that day. So, well, you may get a few licks in. You may bloody me a little bit, but let me tell you something. Say one day, one day. Hey, you, I may go to hell with a few battle scars from the war with Satan, but let me tell you where you're going. You're going to hell. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Amen. 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 Yeah. And I pull that sword out every day. And I read it. And I use it. Hey. Not only do I use the sword, but then I say, okay, I gotta get all in. I've got I gotta stop this half in, half out. Be all in! Right, hey. right. And I say, okay, today I need to obey Christ. Right. Obey. Yeah. And then the best way over to see it. You know, recover him by the word by, by the testimony of Christ. Go so Go so One day when I die, not planning anytime soon. One day when I die, I hope people will be able to say, There's a soul in there. That man went after the souls of mankind. He cared for the souls of mankind. Yeah, right. And maybe he'll say a lot of things about Alan Donnelly. But the one thing that anybody can do is be a soldier. Father, the little thought that you gave me from your word, how to overcome Satan's attacks. Very simple. Simple little truth, our salvation. The blood of the Lamb, we overcome because we're saved. Greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. I have within me the power to overcome you. God, you said by the by the by the test by the uh, word uh, of His testimony that, that your word. Oh God, I can't do it without your word. I can't do it, and I'm just trying to play it safe. I got to start living by faith and, and just go all in. I got to stop holding back. 
then God, I'm going to obey while I'm doing this, and then I just need to keep going so with it. Every one of us can overcome Satan's attacks when they come, whether it be come by accusation, whether it come by war, whether it come, God, that he comes and he says, I'm going to try to hurt, I'm going to, I'm going to persecute them, whatever way it is. But we understand this, it's how those things don't get us, but we overcome them. It's about eyes are closed. 